David Croft has lived in the Amuri Basin near Calverton for most of his life. His father bought the farm in 1962 and David and his wife Vore have brought up two children here. My father shifted here in 1962 and we've sort of gradually built up the business from there. Been dairy farming, 93 sort of-ish. We converted our sheep farm. We've uh, come from dry land sheep farming where rabbits had to bring their lunch through to irrigated dairying um, where we've got a new, new set of problems to combat. Yeah, without irrigation there'd be no community, there'd be no population around here, or, or it'd be very, it'd be struggling. The Crofts get their water from the Amuri Irrigation Scheme that came on stream in 1980. This water, it comes from the Waia River, so this is upstream. It flows on down. Um, at every farm turnout there's a irrigation weir to keep the water at a constant level. Um, the raceman turns the, the water on and off. So then you just hang it on here. Electronic timers are used to drop a gate that diverts the allocated water from the race to the paddock. We lift the gate up, we clip it in, and then we push the start button, and then we walk away. Yeah, so in the summertime the water will be flowing on down here. Um, naturally the water flows downhill. At each of these concrete dams, there's a minimum drop. When that dam drops, the water will fill up to this height. All these sills are all at the same level, so these control the water flowing over. So the water flows on, on down between the humps, which are the, the borders. All of our soil types, you know, the clay base, so it's just filling up the, the topsoil with water, and then the rest of it flows on down. But the border dike flood irrigation scheme that was constructed in the late 1970s in later years turned out to have some unacceptable environmental side effects. I suppose that dates back to the early 2000s when there was a contamination in the Hunui River and Ikan jumped in a jet boat and did some water samples and pointed to the Pahau River, which one of the major streams flowing into the Hunui. It was quite contaminated, so they did a bit of a case study of the Pahau and found out that there was quite a bit of what was irrigation bywash water entering into the into the various streams that fed the Pahau and obviously flowed onto the Hunui. Um, and that dates back to the way the scheme was designed. It was put in or designed in the 70s. It was designed to use the water once, and once the water was used, it was directed straight to the nearest creek. And through time when dairying's moved in, more intensive land use, obviously more contaminated water leaving the farms. So the water testing came up with irrigation bywash as a major problem. So we did a couple of things. One, we, we changed our irrigation clocks to make them more reliable. We tried to reuse some water. For instance, this higher part of the farm, we'd gather it up and reuse it, and that lowered the amount of volume leaving the property, but it probably doubled the concentration, so just not much further ahead there. So then we came up with the idea, well, if we build a big pond, we're clay based, so we, we can store water easily and cheaply. So all our water runs off the border diking into the pond, and then we've got about 80 hectares that we spray from the pond through a pivot and sprinklers. So yeah, no water leaves the farm. David's neighbours all took similar action and between them they succeeded in cleaning up the previously polluted Pahau River. Well everything's got an impact hasn't it? It doesn't matter whether it's a person living in a tent to a city to a thousand cows, everything has an impact and it's just trying to minimise the impact that, and, and be responsible. Managing our environmental impact is definitely the, the biggest challenge we'll have. 